Today, I have the privilege to interview Patricia Tomasi, a two-time postpartum bipolar disorder survivor, freelance journalist for HuffPost Canada, and maternal mental health advocate. Hi, Patricia. Hi. Nice uh, to have you on the call. Oh, nice to be here. Yes, I'm so happy. Like uh, with what I've been through, uh, postpartum bipolar disorder. Since then, nine years ago, I've been looking on the internet and online to find other moms that have been through uh, mm -hmm. the same thing. And I, with the years, I'm slowly finding some moms but it's been a little bit difficult i don't think we see that often no and i don't think a lot of us are diagnosed i was diagnosed eight years after it happened oh wow <laughs> oh so i didn't even know it was postpartum bipolar disorder oh huh. so like can you tell us a little bit about yourself like a little bit more sure so i'm a mom of two i yeah. currently have a four-year-old and a nine-year-old uh, two girls I am a journalist. I write about maternal mental health um, and I'm a, an advocate. So I want to make sure that we improve sure. the healthcare system in Canada for uh, women and men yes. who um, perinatal mental illnesses. Excellent. So what made you decide to uh, focus on your journalism on uh, maternal mental health? Yeah, it's not something, you know, you say, this is what I want to do. Of course, I didn't even know it, it existed when I was in journalism school. Um, I had been covering the general news uh, in my 20s. And then I, I uh, went to government communications for a while, but I was still freelancing on the sides, journalism. And then I got to, you know, I got married when I was 28. And then I had my first child when I was uh, 31. Okay. And, uh, boom. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome to not only motherhood, but maternal mental, mental illness, which yeah. at the time I didn't know anything about. Hmm. So, you know, the onus is on mothers right now in Canada to come forward with symptoms, but I, I didn't even know what I needed to come forward with. I didn't hmm. even know something was happening to me. So uh, I, went through, I went through that for a few years. And then as I started to understand that I was going through, you know, something, whether it was postpartum depression or postpartum anxiety or uh, what I thought at the time was an existential crisis. Oh, okay. Uh, with me, my postpartum uh, bipolar disorder, the mania that I experienced yeah. was a, a hyper, a super religious huh. mania. Yeah. So I started, you know, and, and there's nothing wrong with being religious and believing in angels, but I actually thought I was talking to them, that they were talking to me. Uh, I, cause I thought I could heal people. I took all these courses and Reiki and chakra bouncing. And again, holistic, you know, medicine is great, but I yeah. went in the deep end mm -hmm. um, into that. And so, um, I started to uh, to become, let's say, aware that something wasn't right when uh, I became pregnant for a second time. Okay. And that's when I started to write about it. Hmm. Okay. So the first time you just experienced all those symptoms, no diagnosis, and wow. So how long did it last, those symptoms, for the first time? Well, my daughter was four when I became pregnant again. So uh, there was no, it lasted that whole time. It wow. just progressed. In the beginning, it was postpartum, let's say, I would say postpartum depression, and then anxiety, and then depression, and then into this mania. And same thing with you, how you had the hypergraphia. You yeah. Were I was writing a lot. I had all these ideas in my head. I wrote a book on my iPhone on the train on the way to work. I wrote a, I wrote a wow. book in a month. I, uh, I rented a theater in downtown Toronto. I wrote a musical. I starred in a one woman, woman musical. <laughs> like, really? Um, it, it was something else. And, and when I was diagnosed at Women's College Hospital just last year, um, 
and and the the psychiatrist said, "Well, didn't anyone say anything that yeah. some star was going on?" And I said, "Well, I've always been kind of outgoing and out there, and I think I think I had bipolar my whole life, really. But、okay. because mental health and mental illness really isn't something that's、um, taken seriously、mm-hmm. yet, I was never diagnosed." Wow. So it's really like the fact, like we know, like childbirth triggers a lot in a woman's body. So you think that it could have been the trigger for? Oh, for you know, sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. For sure. So over those four years, I would say when I became pregnant again, and what my doctor thinks is that when you're pregnant, your hormones go back up.、Mm-hmm. Right? And for some women like me, when my hormones are are up, I feel quote unquote normal. Again,、okay. I I feel grounded. I feel, you know, I wasn't in that manic state, and so that's when I started to do my reflecting and my thinking because、hmm. I wasn't interested in the new age world anymore, like not at all. And I started to gain perspective, started to learn about maternal mental illness, and I was like, okay, I I think this is what I went through.、Hmm. So I pay attention to the signs when I have my second child. But I thought for sure I wasn't going to get it again because part of me was still thinking, well, I don't know if I still didn't know if it was real. I was、hmm. still in that camp. So I had my second baby. The symptoms started again, worse than the first、worse. one. So for me, it's completely biological、hmm. because nothing else was wrong. My baby slept through the night. I had no stress, and the symptoms came on worse. So.、Hmm. I、uh, I cried one night. I bawled because that was the realization that this is a real illness, and I need to go on medication. I was so against medication that completely changed my perspective, 180.、Hmm. And that's when I seriously started to write about maternal mental health. Seriously、hmm. wanted to get to the bottom of the biological causes. What's happening in Canada? Why wasn't I helped? Why aren't our other women helped? And so now I'm still on medication. I'm going to be on for the rest of my life. Yeah, I know, same as me. But I'm grounded.、Yes. I have perspective.、Um, and yeah, so that that's where I got to be today. Hmm. Interesting. And when you say with your pregnant pregnancy, like my second pregnancy、uh, was. Excellent, and I remember telling my psychiatrist, "You know what? I am not manic, hypomania, but I do feel good, like so good about myself." And yeah, that pregnancy was wonderful, and I remember being happy and very productive at work. And yeah, so I think, like you, just the fact that the hormones change make it a little bit like nothing dangerous, whatever. Like it was fine, but just a little bit more happy, I think, than. Than what normal would have been like before. Right, and your second pregnancy, did you get it again? No, no. Like we knew the symptoms. The only thing I got a few days after I gave birth is anxiety, because、uh, anxiety I've never dealt really with that. But it did happen with my son, my first、uh, postpartum, and then in the second time, yes. So I. My psychiatrist just told me increase your dose. So I was on、uh, I'm on olanzapine, so it does、yeah. help as well for anxiety. So he said if you ever feel a little bit of anxiety or feel like something is not quite right, just increase your dose. Like he, he trusted totally, he trusted me. So that's what I did. I increased my dose for a little while, and everything was fine. But no, like no symptom, no mood disorder, nothing. Like everything went smoothly. But we had a strong plan in place. My mom came. My sister-in-law came. My 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 husband was working from home, so I could rest a lot. I could, you know, have some people taking care of me. So, the most important part, I think, for me was getting some rest and no stress and taking、mm-hmm. it easy. So I was staying home, like not a lot of visitors. I maybe had a f- one or two that would come and bring supper, you know. But、uh, everything was in place to rest and make sure that everything would be fine. So. No, no symptoms. But after, like since then, my daughter is four years old, and no mood shift. But sometimes I'm a little bit down or a little bit, you know. And anxiety is part 
is there. <laughs> so I have strategies and my medication is there, but that is one symptom that just kind of stayed with me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm on chapter nine of your book. Oh, okay. I watched your first video, but I like to read, just like I like to read books first and then watch the movie. So I'm re yes. reading it first. So I'm not finished, but I, uh, I really resonated with your story. I, I never went to the hospital because mm. I didn't know what was happening and my husband didn't know what was happening. I should have gone to the hospital, but mm -hmm. everything you're writing about is just, I'm hanging on every word because it just resonates so much with me. And I just thank you for writing it. And I think we all need to tell our stories. Mm -hmm. I think that's the only way we're going to get things changed. Yes. So really, we need to hear our stories. Totally. Either we are real women and men. I have to keep saying and men. And Even men. Total, yes. The li I think it's a little different, but, but still very important that men as well. And your husband was so supportive. That was so nice to see too. He uh, was. He was very supportive. Like, and I, yes, he, in his life, he was just starting on his own. So I think that kind of helped. Like he would have been supportive, but the fact that he was just starting his own company, was not super busy, it helped. Like it really, I think what I went through was very difficult, but at the same time, I was lucky, I think, to have my husband working from home, being able to stay at the hospital overnight because he did. He brought his own bed because it was like, I want to make sure that she gets the, she, uh, when people were asking me questions and everything, so make sure that I would get the proper treatment. And, uh, Yes, I think I've been blessed. And with the medication, so many moms have a hard time finding the right medication as well. Mm -hmm. And the psychiatrist, we started with olanzapine and it worked. Like, And you will see while you will read the book, like how it started being effective. Well, not fully effective. Like it took a little bit of time, but I could see the difference like fast you mm. know, with the medication, So, which, which is good. So yes, it's been uh, difficult, but at the same time, it didn't take like super long to recover. You will see with the book as well. I did go to depression after, but we caught it on time. So it was not like a deep depression. And so, uh, and my psychiatrist was just amazing. And he's still amazing. I still see him every three months. And this Dr. Saeed? Dr. Saeed, yes. Oh, great. So I'm an outpatient at the, at the hospital. So I go, I still go to the hospital to see him, but I'm an outpatient. Oh. So, and he still, yeah, he follows me. And uh, so that's why, like, even with the second pregnancy, we were ready. Like, he knew, we knew the symptoms. So he was there. And as soon after birth, I saw him again. So he was really, like, following, like, what was what's going. What's See, going and that's so, great. Uh, yes. Because I, I, don't, I don't have a personal psychiatrist. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a lack of them. Totally. And even if you finally get one after being on the wait list, sometimes they're not. You know, like the other psychiatrist you saw who, who really didn't yeah. form a connection with you. So I'm really glad you have Dr. Saeed with you. And that's yeah. what we need. I think we need uh, to go further than Dr. Saeed, perinatal mental health specialists. Totally. They have them in the UK. We just have such a long way to go. Mm -hmm. I really, really hope we follow the, the UK and Australia. Totally. Uh, and, and, even I, West. and even at the hospital, having a maternal unit, I don't know how you say that in English, right, but, but right. mom and baby, I think I was lucky they put me on neurology. Yeah. <laughs> I, I had my own bedroom and I insisted that I was breastfeeding. So that helped me, that helped my case just to stay there and I have my bedroom over there because if I would have been in the sick, sick yard, ward, I don't know how to say that, like mental ward, mental ward. Yeah. then I was, they, they told me that I would not have been able to keep my baby over there. And that was really important for me. So I think, yeah, we need to have maternal ward in hospital here in, in yeah. total name. So yeah, it's called MBU mom and baby units. Oh, great. Yeah. And Canada, uh, there are a few advocates that have tried to get one here uh, in Toronto. Um, the, the woman that's in charge of the Mount Sinai Maternal mm -hmm. Mental Health Program, Ariel Dolphin, and a few others have tried, uh, but it hasn't worked. We might be getting one in BC. United States has one. Yes, I've They've seen that. They've existed in, since the 50s. Oh, wow. <laughs> in the UK. So, yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's obvious, but here, I guess they haven't gotten over the liability issue of having your baby 
hmm. with you and but i mean how can you stick a woman in in a in a mental ward um you know with other dangerous patients it's just it's not right no it's not, no yeah no and then yes and for me i think they said like since i had like psychotic symptoms they were like okay you cannot be alone with your baby but yes my husband was there the fact that my mom was there yeah i was never alone even though i never had any thoughts of harming my baby or harming myself but still we we didn't know what could happen so right. being in a maternal ward we would know that it's made you know i will be there's always someone you know with a mom and a baby and that that would help you know totally yeah yeah so how did you get help the second time when you realized that okay those symptoms are getting worse like how did you get help or what kind of help did you get so only because i had made myself aware of maternal mm -hmm. mental illness so then i was able to recognize it before things got too far i brought myself in to the family doctor i said uh well really what happened was the symptoms were worse but i also had different kind of symptoms and some that really scared me that i wasn't sure whether this was postpartum depression or anxiety or not in the middle of the night i woke up and my entire left side of my body was numb and tingly oh, and i didn't have that the first time around and so i was thinking is this postpartum anxiety or am I having a stroke you know like or a hallucination a tactile auto, or, like yeah. like me I had a pain in my leg yeah, I was in pain and I wasn't real right right and when I read that that's the first time I thought oh were some of the things I was feeling maybe not real mm. I had I never thought of that before so I had that and then I was like oh my god and the anxiety you know just just clamps on to something so that was it I, I called 911 I woke up my husband. I said, the ambulance is coming. It wasn't the first time I called 911 in my life for some for anxiety. Mm. So he said, oh, my God, Patty. He called me Patty. Mm. You got to stop taking other people's ambulances. <laughs> I said, it had been a few years since I called one. I said, no, but my whole left side is numb. Like, oh what do you want God. me to do? So he said, okay. So I went to the hospital. When I got there, they asked me questions. I said, you know, I kept saying, I don't know if this is postpartum anxiety or not. I had it really bad the first time around. I kept saying that, but everyone just kept ignoring that. Hmm. Got my blood test done. Doctor came in. Everything's normal. The numbness, of course, had gone away. Hmm. I said to him, I'm going to make an appointment with my doctor tomorrow. I think it might be postpartum anxiety. I've been Googling these past five hours, and numbness and tingling can be a symptom. Again, fell on deaf ears. So he, he looked like I didn't even say anything. And he said, if you want, I can schedule an MRI to see whether it's multiple sclerosis. And I was, ah. like, I was like, oh, great. Make me even more anxious. Anxious, of course. He, he thought he was trying to make me feel better. But I was like, no, 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 I'll, I'll go see my family doctor. So that's what I did. I, I went to go see my family doctor. I said, I think this is postpartum anxiety. Told her about my whole history. Um, she, she put me through the Edinburgh Postpartum Depression Scale, the survey. Um, I scored, even though it was mostly anxiety and they don't have too many questions on anxiety, I scored high. So I said to her, I think it's time for medication, mm -hmm. uh, which I was so against because I was into all this holistic therapy, but I knew I was grounded. I, I knew it was time. So she prescribed the medication. I went on a wait list for a therapist, which I never got to see. Mm -hmm. Luckily, the medication worked right away. And uh, so after about a month, month and a half, I felt good. After three months, I felt fantastic. Mm -hmm. After six months, I, I felt, you know, I felt completely... I hate using the word normal, but I don't know what else to use. Uh, I, yeah, I understand I what you mean. I felt sane. I yes. felt normal. And I was actually able to enjoy motherhood the second time around. So I did a lot of writing, a lot of reporting for the Huffington Post. And I'm, I'm still going four years later. Hmm, great. And for you, um, I don't know, it's not... It's a question now I kind of have in my head. But for me, I was like, will I ever feel myself again like that was my big worry like so did you ever feel like that like oh my like will i ever feel like myself again you mean going on medication or just the whole thing in general uh, 
the whole thing, what maybe me, at first I was scared of medication. I took the medication because it made me feel right. But at the same time, I was like, am I feeling like this because of the medication? Am I, will I find my normal, uh, like what, what will the medication do to my brain? Like, will I come, well, will I feel myself at, even like before I had the medication? Right, you know? right. Well, in my case, after I went on medication, it was probably the most, I would say, um, normal, insane feeling that I ever felt in my entire life. Wow. So it was, it was probably the first time I ever felt grounded hmm. for, for a long period of time and still ongoing. So that's when I realized I probably should have been on medication my whole mm. life. There is a history of bipolar in my family. Oh, okay. Not, it's not out in the open. Mm. I don't think it's formally diagnosed, but we all kind of know. And there's depression, there's anxiety, but it's something we never talked about. So I, it wasn't on my radar either. Mm. Um, I had panic attacks in my 20s. I think I started having little manic episodes. Okay. Um, the, the, the most full blown one was after I had my first baby, but this is something that's been on and off throughout my entire life, which puts me at a much higher risk uh, yeah. of maternal mental illness. So the fact that that wasn't flagged, that's why I advocate so much for universal screening. Mm -hmm. If someone had, if we had gone through a screening process when I was pregnant, then I should have been monitored. May, you know, I probably should have been on medication the whole time. Mm -hmm. Was pregnant. So um, the original question was, how did it make me feel? I didn't want to take the medication because why didn't I want to take it? Not because I thought it was going to change who I was. I just, I was just so, I, I'm also a hypochondriac. So I was just so scared of what the medication would do to my body. Mm -hmm. I was in that camp of, I don't want to put chemicals in my body. Um, and so I still encounter that a lot today with women in my support group with over 2000 women from around the world. That's another thing. I was looking for a support group. I'm like, mm -hmm. there's gotta be more people in yes. my city who have this and I can't find them. I can't talk to anybody that that's what I wanted. I wanted peer support. Totally. Same thing for me. Yeah. So I started a Facebook group and I expanded not only my city, but uh, Ontario, Canada, I said, I'm going to open this up to the world. Great. So a lot of, there are a lot of women who are afraid to take the medication. And so I try to, because I understand where they're coming from, I try to, uh, let them know that it's, it's a lifesaver mm -hmm. and not to be afraid of it. I mean, I know there's still so much research that we need to do about it, but, um, I definitely did a 180 from the first pregnancy to the second pregnancy of my understanding of maternal mental illness. So no, I didn't think the medication was going to change who I was. I was just, I just hate like going to the doctor and hospitals. Mm -hmm. It's a phobia and I didn't want chemicals in my body and yeah. I see. You were saying uh, like you were not flagged and uh, the fact that, you know, you had like, some things happening before your pregnancy that could have, you know, tell the doctor, hey, you have a bigger chance of having like a maternal uh, illness. So in one blog, you mentioned that no one ever had a conversation with you about perinatal or postpartum depression anytime prior to or during your pregnancy or at any time postpartum. And you were not flagged to your previous history of anxiety and depression. So how important is it for expecting parents? to be well informed about peri perinatal mood and anxiety disorder? What do you think? It's vital. Yeah. We, te we test them for uh, diabetes. We, te we, 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 we go through so many tests. The uh, maternal mental illness is the most common complication, the most common complication mm -hmm. in pregnancy and postpartum with effects that can last generations if not properly treated. There are so many studies that say the effects on children of mothers with untreated postpartum depression, it affects their, their uh, nervous system, and they are at a higher risk of developing 
uh, mental illnesses as they grow older. I mean, this is just a cycle that we have to stop. Totally. So it's vital. It's vital that we have universal perinatal mental health screening, pre-pregnancy, yes. pregnancy, postpartum, not four weeks postpartum, a mm -hmm. year, a year and longer. And also throughout all reproductive stages, because a lot of times, uh, one of the main causes of, of maternal mental illness is, is, is reproductive hormones. So my first uh, big bout of depression happened just about the time of puberty, hmm. right? When my reproductive hormones started to change, right? Mm -hmm. or, or, or make themselves known. So when I was 14, I went into a huge depression and um, uh, again, wasn't flagged because, boy, I mean, we talk a bit about it now, but back then we didn't talk about it at mm -mm -mm. all. So, you know, puberty, something else happens in our 20s. A, a lot of times bipolar uh, starts to show itself in your 20s. Childbirth, perimenopause, menopause. I mean, this is, it's, I always say, this isn't just a, a health issue. This is a women's health issue yeah. and a women's rights issue. Mm. Yes, I remember reading that from you. Yeah, totally. I totally agree. And uh, as well, like the fact, I don't know if sometimes people, I, I don't know. That's something I'm questioning. Like I, we had prenatal classes. I remember being told a little bit about the blues and postpartum depression. But really, like even my husband doesn't have really a lot of, memories about did they really talk like long enough about postpartum mood disorder like not much and then we were lucky the fact that we I had a midwife she saw something well my husband too I think what helped my husband is the fact that his mother is diagnosed with bipolar disorder so he remember is what his mom went through and he was like oh my wife is showing some stuff that is very similar to my mom and the midwives you know with midwives we have a lot of appointments for the first um, six weeks so I think that really helped and she said okay you go to the hospital but I think we were not well informed like when the first symptoms started showing up we had no clue like we didn't know so I really think I agree with you we should be more informed but are people afraid of talking about postpartum mood disorder to expecting parents thinking oh we don't want to scare them or I don't know if you heard that before, but that's something I'm wondering, like, we don't want to scare new parents, but at the same time, this is really important information to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've, I've, I've heard that. I've heard a little bit of that before, but um, I disagree with that. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think, you know, expecting parents need to know everything about postpartum mood disorders, but they definitely need to know the, that it exists what the symptoms are. But yeah. what I think the real problem is, is that the onus is on the mother or the father to come forward. Mm. This is the problem. So let's say, um, I don't know, you're suffering. Let, let, I want to do like an, a comparison with uh, something else in a different part of the body other than the brain or the hormones. Let's say, let's just say diabetes because we were yeah. talking about that before. Um, are you expect, are you expected to know everything about diabetes, mm -hmm. how the cells work, how the insulin works, how all of that works? No, no. They test you for it. Totally. Right. You might even not know what diabetes is. So why aren't we treating maternal mental illness as something, if it's the most common complication, why aren't we testing for it? And right now our best test is this. Edinburgh postpartum depression scale. I mean, that can vastly be vastly improved as well. Mm -hmm. My opinion, uh, yes. un until we have uh, better questions, you know, maybe even a blood test one day or some kind of medical test. But I mean, why why are are the expected parents? Why are men and women expected to know everything about maternal mental illness in order to come forward? You're they don't. Right expect us to know everything about any other complication, mm -hmm. right? That's the professional's job. So that's why universal screening. Yes, that would be important. Yeah, I like, I like your point of view. You're right. I think 
have basic information by basic like a good information before so it helps like to recognize but at the same time yes if there was screening then yes it will be even better totally mm -hmm. what kind of support uh has been the most helpful for you in your re recovery process you talked a little bit about that but i don't in terms of did you have like some people around you to help you your husband or yeah what was mm -hmm. it so I had a few things. Uh, the first time around, of course, is a whole blur. I never, I never received any help. The second time around, I, I went on medication. Um, I couldn't function until the medication took effect. Okay. So um, there's, there, this is something else I hope to write an article about soon. Is that there's no kind of home care for women with moderate to severe maternal mental illness. I couldn't function. I couldn't. I could hardly get up, get out of bed. Hmm. So how could I take care of my kids? My husband leaves at five in the morning, comes home at six. He works. Um, my parents are not in the same town as me. I have a sister. She's in a different province. All my neighbors work. So I had to dip into my savings to hire a nanny. Hmm. And so I spent, and the nanny stayed with me, even though I started to feel better after a month or so, I still needed her help. Um, she stayed with me for about six to eight months okay. and I, I spent a lot of money, mm -hmm. <laughs> all my savings I spent on uh, the nanny, but I needed her. I needed her so much. So that really helped me. Another thing that really, really helped me, which I touched on earlier was peer support hmm. and online peer support. Um, I, I found, I, I just couldn't. I couldn't leave the house to join any mommy groups. I tried. In the beginning, it was really tough because uh, I, I couldn't even function at home. So how could I even go out? Mm -hmm. So online was really good for me because it was 24-7. And these women, you know, I, I wanted what I wanted to do was know that I wasn't alone. Find somebody who was experiencing the same scary symptom as me mm -hmm. who could say, oh, my God, yeah, I went through that. You know, it's okay. Just breathe through it. And really, that was my therapy, Great. the peer support. Yeah. So that, that's the Facebook group that you, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. It, it is very important. I think that's what, with my son the first time, especially in the first one, I was going to a mommy group and I share my story. I think I, I've never been ashamed of what I've been through. There's something positive, I guess, in what I experienced. Some women, you know, have a harder time with that. But no one experienced what I went through. So I always had that feeling of, am I the only one who got that diagnosis? And not that I was doubting, uh, doubting like what my psychiatrist had said. I was like, okay, what? Well, I don't find it even online. And the first time I find someone, it was Dan, Diane Harwood um, on postpartum, um, um, postpartum progress. She wrote an article. I was like, oh, this is it. There is someone out there. So we, we connected. It was like for the first time I had someone I could talk to, had some similar symptoms and everything. So I felt connected. I feel like, okay, I'm not alone. And this is so important. I totally agree. Um, totally agree with you. But if I would have found another place online where I could talk with other women, that would have been even better. Because mm -hmm. yes. it's not about as having a support group on the challenges of new motherhood. No, maternal mental illness is something it's something unique. The challenges of new motherhood make our conditions worse <laughs> mm -hmm. or, tr or trigger or trigger it to, to, to come out. But this is something different than, uh, than just the normal ups and downs of motherhood. And that's, I was trying to get, you know, I would email my friends when I didn't know what was happening to me and say, Oh my God, this is happening to me. I'm having heart palpitations. Mm -hmm. I'm having, insomnia, panic attacks. And I don't think they, like, we throw out around the word panic attack. And so they were saying, oh, yeah, I, I was anxious after mm -hmm. I had my child. But I was like, no, there's something no. else going on here. You really need to connect with, with people who are going through the same thing as you. Yes. Um, it helps so much to know that you aren't alone. Totally. That, would, that would actually calm me down in the middle of the night. Hmm. Yeah, so peer support was a huge one. That's good. Excellent. So um, you talked about it, that the, everything that you've been doing after, like your mental, uh, mental health advocate and everything, but is there a specific way 
all you went through changed you or what impact it had on you? Mm. I would say it had a huge impact. It uh, completely changed my life in all ways, <laughs> many mm -hmm. ways. Because when I was going through my manic episode after I had my first, um, I thought angels would tell, were telling me to quit my job. <laughs> oh. Yeah. See, I'm still kind of embarrassed talking about it. Um, there's still that in me, but, mm. but, I, and that's another thing I'm noticing too. I'm o I'm okay with telling everyone else's story. I haven't really told my story yet, so that's a goal of mine to write it down. That's why I I applaud you. I applaud Diane. Uh, I'm getting there. Um, so I I I quit my job. Hmm high salary job as communications for the government and of course I wasn't bringing in uh, uh, any money mm -hmm. <laughs> so we had to sell our house so it changed my life and the fact that like physically we had to move yeah. we moved to another city um, it changed my life it changed my direction and focus my focus now is all about mm -hmm. maternal mental health um, you know did it make me stronger and all that? You know, I hear people say postpartum depression made me stronger and everything. And it did, and that's great. But I don't think I needed to go through that to be a stronger person. Mm -hmm. um, I think if I didn't go through that, I, I, I could still be a strong person. So I don't want to glamorize yeah. maternal illness as something we don't need to go through. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's changed I would say everything about me and it's also changed how I raise my kids mm. a lot more in in tune with their mental health um, so it's yeah it's changed everything yeah and do you think it had any well it probably had an impact on your husband as well like of course the fact that you quit your job and selling your house but is there another part of his life that you think it had an impact on him yeah the first time because both him and I didn't know what was going on. We had a really rough time in our relationship, mm. and, uh, almost almost separated. Um, it was only until started we started learning about what was happening, what had happened, and then when I got pregnant the second time, and I was, you know, saying to him, it was it was me that was coming around finally and saying, you know, I think this is what actually was happening all, all that time. Mm -hmm. And I was, you know, he, he's a pretty laid back guy to begin with. And I've always been out there like doing, I'm always doing things like going on a cooking show and bringing him on it. Like I was like on the show, mm -hmm. you know, and bringing my friends on it, going to weird places like I've always been that sort of person and he's always just kind of went along for the ride so I've been lucky that way um, but it definitely did put a strain on our relationship mm. because instead of being the fun manic person in the beginning I was very angry very irritable oh. very sad asking him all the time do you love me do you love very mm. insecure and he didn't know what was going on. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I think he just grinned and bared it. Um, we did get to a point where we almost separated. Uh, and that was me. That was, I, you know, because I was saying, I, I don't think we can do this anymore. So he was just pretty much took a back seat and waited for it to kind of subside. And um, I mean, now we're fully knowledgeable in what happened. Uh, we're closer than ever. Luckily, because I know a lot of women's and men's relationships, that's, it puts a huge strain on their relationship, yeah. mainly because they don't know what's going on and can, can't handle the symptoms and uh, they, they separate. Yeah. So there's actually a study out about how postpartum affects relationships. Mm. I have it in my inbox. I haven't read it yet, but that's another area I want to look at. Send yeah. it to me. I'm interested to. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yes, of course. And I think we tend to forget, we put a lot, I, th I think what I've seen is that we talk a lot about the mom, like what the mom is going through, but it's, it's hard for the partner as well. And, uh, and also, oops, my mic is going crazy a little bit. Um, even fathers can go through depression 
after and one in ten so I th I'm happy that there is more awareness to that too that yes mothers but also fathers are at risk of of uh, postpartum yeah. depression after or even like if not like it's it's not easy for them when their partner is going through uh postpartum mood disorder so sure. in the beginning when they started talking about dads and postpartum depression i was like oh no 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 this is a mom thing but then you know i started thinking yeah of course of course they go through it but i was coming at it more from a biological sense mm -hmm. of, yeah you know, we went through birth we have the hormones but now there's actually studies coming out that are saying to a lesser degree than women, but their hormones actually change as well. Hmm. Their testosterone takes a huge dip after the baby's born, just like how our hormones take a dip. So I was like, huh, well, there you go. Yeah. It'd be biological for them too. Yes. Yes. No, I want to, I want to know more about that i'm very interested in even on my youtube channel to interview like dads or if i can find some dads that went through something difficult like that i would like to to know more about that for sure mm -hmm. yes what advice would you give to mothers and fathers going through the challenging experience of postpartum mood anxiety disorder i would definitely say don't give up mm -hmm. keep going to a second doctor a third doctor if you have to um, know that there is treatment out there. If the first treatment doesn't work the first time, try the second one. Um, don't give up because there is help and you deserve to be helped. You have the right to be helped. Totally. And, um, and just know that there are moms and dads who have been through this, who are fighting on your behalf to make sure that you have all the help you need during pregnancy and postpartum to not have to suffer the way you are now. Mm -hmm. And that, that when you've received the help and um, you're all better to come and join us yeah. because we are going to change the system. Totally. So that brings another question. Like, I think to come out and talk about it, it, it takes courage. I think it takes like, it's we're being vulnerable we're sharing our story so did you ever felt stigma for what you've been through or i don't know like um i wouldn't say ashamed but stress about the fact about your story um yes um i've always been an open person and i was okay with coming out and saying postpartum anxiety first okay uh, anxiety i felt was uh, okay, an okay term. A lot of people have anxiety. I wasn't comfortable with postpartum depression. Hmm. I like, um, I don't want to be associated with depression, maybe. Mm -hmm. Depressed. It's, it's just anxiety. I have anxiety. Then when I was diagnosed with postpartum bipolar disorder, knowing that, you know, that's what I went through. I was like, wow, I didn't want to tell anybody. Hmm. I, I stigma with bipolar. I was okay with anxiety. I had I got comfortable with depression. I was, maybe even OCD. I would be okay with saying, you know, because people throw around the term OCD. But bipolar, I thought that was on another level, and I wasn't comfortable with it. Um, so that was just last year. Hmm. Getting more and more comfortable with it. Um, you know, I change my social media profile descriptions a lot. Like, I'm just trying to. Like I said, I, I, I find it really easy to tell other people's stories. It's my story that I'm working on telling. That's my goal for 2019. Well, sometimes I have on there two-time postpartum bipolar survivor. Sometimes I take it off. Um, but I'm working on it. But uh, I do also um, get, get feedback from others sometimes that I, kind of shocks me. There's still some work to be done. Um, a lot of people still think that it's not real, that we create mm. fault. That's how I thought the first time around too. So, I mean, I can under, understand where they're coming from. Um, so yeah, we have to, there's a lot of awareness, a lot of education that needs to be done. And yes. yeah. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I'm happy you can share, share all that with me. Um, um, what is your word of hope? for mothers and fathers? 
Yeah, I know you gave me this in advance, and I think <laughs> come up with a goal. I I would say persistence. Hmm. Um, and I guess I'm just drawing from my own personal experience because I had to be persistent, hmm. and it, it it falls with the theme of don't give up. So, yeah. word of hope is persistence, uh, because you you will find someone who will help you just keep reaching out yeah Thank you, Bob. totally thanks where can people connect you uh, with you online like i will put on my uh, youtube channel in the description i can make like i put some links over there where other people can reach you yeah i have a website it's patriciatomasi.com perfect and if uh, some woman would like to join the peer group is that possible uh, on your facebook peer support group yeah, there's a link from my website. Yeah. It says join Facebook group, so they can just they can join from there. Excellent. Perfect. And any other thing you would like to say or share? I would, actually. Um, I am part of the grassroots movement right now in Canada. We are going to be announcing very soon, like in January, um, that uh, advocates, moms like you and me, professionals, you know, psychiatrists, nurses, um, researchers in, in perinatal mental health from all across Canada, we are forming a coalition called the Perinatal Mental Health Coalition of Canada. Okay. Our main goal is trying to get a national strategy for perinatal mental health. And we're going to be reaching out to moms to join us. There's going to be lots of calls to action. Our first call of action is going to be trying to get us on the agenda. All the health ministers are having a meeting in the spring, and we are trying to get on that agenda for the first time. Oh, great. So, um, so yeah, I want to if you can let your viewers know about that. We're going to be asking moms to join us and to sign a petition that we're going to be releasing in January. Okay. Sure. There's a piece to put all of that all of that energy that, you know, because the women who have gone through it, they become warrior moms that we want to yes. do something. And you're doing your YouTube channel and you wrote a book and we're so eager to do something to change the system. Yes. So hoping to harness all that energy, come together in a coalition and do something nationally. That would be great. Sure. So I can put some information uh, on the YouTube channel about that as well. Yes. Thank you so much, Patricia. I really appreciate uh, the opportunity to talk to you. Thank you. I think what you're doing is so great, and I look forward to reading the rest of your book. You like my videos, and you care about my mission to speak openly about postpartum mental health? You can help me make it happen by subscribing to my channel and sharing my videos with others. Just click on subscribe. I also created a Patreon account to help you contribute directly to my mission. Interested? Just click on the link below my video, which will direct you to my Patreon page. Then click on become a patron and join my exclusive community. Thanks to you, I can continue to invest time and energy to produce and then present you quality videos on a regular basis. Do not forget to take a look at the benefits you can get in exchange. I thank you for your interest in my channel and I'm already grateful to you for taking the time to look at its content and share it with others.